Today, we will introduce you to more effective strategy building and answer frequently asked questions. We'll be deepening our knowledge today and showing how to simplify and improve everything to make the most of the fact that we have very powerful computers at home, considering how it was in the past, of course. And we can use that power we have to make our lives easier in trading as well. Well, and how do we take advantage of it? That's what we are going to say and show today. We will also show you how to build strategies for GBP JPY. So we will extend the workflow for NASDAQ that we already know to Forex. You will also get a tutorial on how to simplify your overall strategy workflow and we will answer some frequent last question. In the last strategy lab lesson, I also promised you a little surprise, but in order not to reveal too much in one day, because there's going to be quite a lot of new things, we decided to reveal it in the next webinar, which will be available around the middle of next week, so in just a few days. And today's schedule is specifically as follows. We will go through the GBP JPY strategy building first, where I will show you how to simplify everything, followed by a look at the FAQs. And once we answer all the questions, we will look back at strategy quant at the strategies for GBP JPY. Let's start with the strategies. Here you can see the whole building process. First, we will build 1000 strategies on the data from year 2009 to 2018. Then we will make two out of sample tests. On Forex, the procedure is a bit different because we have a much larger sample of data than for stock indexes. And that's why we make two out of sample tests. We perform the first out of sample on data from September the 1st, 2018 to the present. And the second out of sample will be from 2003 to the end of 2008. Next, we will look at how the strategies behave on Euro JPY and then on USD JPY. Then we will test for a five pip slippage and last, Monte Carlo retest method test. Those of you who would like to can optionally add tests on other pairs like AUD JPY, for example, with a profit factor of at least one and also Monte Carlo trades manipulation test. But this is not necessary. It is up to you. So let's do that and switch to strategic quant. In strategy quant, I have our small original portfolio that we created in the last strategy lab lesson. Today, we might surprise you a little bit because we are not going to work like we did last time in builder and retester, but here in the custom project section. This is a great part of strategy quant that we added a couple of years ago and we are constantly improving it. It's great because it allows you to connect other parts of strategy quant and automate everything as much as possible as you can you know, imagine. Remember the last time we went through the entire workflow for NASDAQ manually, like step by step, meaning we built strategies, then we did auto sample tests, tests on additional markets, on other timeframes and so on. Well, we are able to do all of that as one big process, as one big task in this custom project section where everything is done automatically. To show you the whole thing right away, we have a workflow for NQCFD ready to go in strategy one, exactly the workflow we have been working with. You can see that all the different tasks are put together in sequence. Build strategies, out of sample tests, DJ and DAX tests, time frame tests, slippage tests, and both Monte Carlo tests. The way it works is that once a strategy is built in the first step, strategy one automatically moves on to the second step or second so-called task. It tests 
the out of sample strategies that don't pass this out of sample test don't continue and those that do continue to the next task so they are tested on the DJ market and so on what we used to do manually we can automate here within like 10 minutes we set up the whole workflow just hit the start button and strategic one runs through it all by itself and finally only stores the finished strategies here in our database to see how the whole process works and at the same time how the new strategies are built we will create a new project so click on create new project and let's name it let's say jbp jpy now open this new project the whole setup process is very simple click on add new task build strategies and we start building strategies for jbp jpy to make it a bit easier again we have prepared a configuration for you here click on load saved config and select of course jbp jpy click on yes and everything should set itself up we built for the jbp jpy symbol time frame h1 for metatrader 4 and we just adjust the data go to full settings in the first step leave everything as it is in genetic options if you remember turn off show last generation because this gets rid us of one of the data banks for better clarity in the data tab we have a lot of data available and we want to reduce this according to our table from a presentation from the slideshow we want it from January the 1st 2009 to the end of the August 2018 the last adjustment we make is in the cross-check tab we check that higher backtest precision is enabled specifically one minute precision and just change the spread to five pips in filtering, all values should be set as in the ranking tab. Two trades per month, profit factor at least 1.3, and recent drawdown ratio 4. So let's just check that this fits. And just out of interest, why are we actually building for JBP, JPY market? This is a more volatile market, makes stronger moves, and therefore you can build nice and profitable strategies on it. Anyway, now we have the build set up the way we need it. However, now we have a very important step here, and that is setting up the data bank. You know, where the results will be stored. We now have a result output data bank, which is fine for this particular task. Now, go to the full settings tab. Under the ranking tab, it is set to store a maximum of 1000 strategies in the data bank. We now have to select when to turn off the generation and choose the third option from the available options. Data bank is full. Stop generation when data bank is full. So once the data bank is full, the second task we will add will automatically start. We have set up the first task where we will build 1000 strategies for uh, JBP JPY on H1 time frame in this time range. It's time for the second task. And that's the out of sample test on data from September the 1st, 2018 to the present. Then we will follow up with a second out of sample test, uh, then two tests uh, on additional markets and also a slippage test. But I'm going to show you how you can do all these tests at the same time and simplify our work. We will set up all these five tests in just one task and that's a terrific simplification. Back in strategy quant, I click on add new task, select retest strategies 
and check the option copy config from existing task. We only have one existing task for now, build strategy, so I select that. And this will automatically set all the configuration of our first task into the second task as well. Now we set up all the tests we need. In full settings under the tab data, we will set the date range to the minimum from August the 1st, 2018 to 31st of August, 2018, because we don't need the backtest for this market. In the cross checks tab, we disable higher backtest precision, but we turn on the option backtest on additional markets. Here we set all the required tests. We click on settings, which is the middle table, and you can see that we can add any number of backtests here, even 50, but five will be enough for us. Two out of sample, two different or additional markets, and a test for slippage. Before we get into the backtest settings, I will mention that we always enable only the options we want to change. The three backtests will be on the GBP, JPY market. So for the first three backtests, we will set uh, GBP, JPY as the symbol. The fourth backtest will be for the Euro JPY and the fifth will be for USD JPY. We have selected the markets and now we will set up each test. The first backtest is out of sample on data from September the 1st, 2018 to the latest available data. I will turn on the data setup, select reset dates and choose a start date in 2018, September the 1st. I choose the precision of the backtest to be one minute data and that's it for this test. The second test has a date range from the beginning of the data to the end of 2008. So again, I'll choose reset date and I will choose the end of 2008. So December the 31st, 2008. And again, I set the precision to one minute data. Now we will set the third test. It's going to be the slippage test where we will set the maximum possible date range. I will turn the precision to one minute data and set the slippage to five pips and the spread to three pips because that's good enough for us. The fourth test is for Euro JPY market. Again, I will set the maximum data range and precision to one minute and spread to three pips. And the last fifth test for the USD JPY market, I will set the same way. So I set the maximum possible data range, set the precision to one minute data tick simulation and set the spread to three pips. This sets up all five tests in our table, but we still need to move to the filtering tab. We will be interested in the profit factor this time and for each test separately. So let's add a condition profit factor, but five times for these five tests. Now again, our table will be practical where we can see that for the out of sample one, we want a profit factor of at least one. For out of sample two, 1.1. For slippage, one. For Euro JPY, 1.1. And for USD JPY, one. So we open the first profit factor in order. Choose from backtest. Backtest in additional market. Market one, because that's the first market, this is the first test. Sample full. 
save the settings and we know that we want a profit factor for this particular test at least one and now we set it the same way for the rest of the test for the second one again we choose backtest in additional market market 2 sample full and click on save for the third backtest in additional markets market 3 sample full save it for the fourth backtest in additional markets market number 4 sample full and save and for the last one backtest in additional markets market 5 sample full and save it again now for each test let's set the appropriate profit factor value the first one is already set that was the first out of sample out of sample 2 is 1.1 the third test is for slippage where we want a value of at least 1 for euro JPY market it's 1.1 and for USD JPY, it's at least one. So in a few minutes, we have set up a huge amount of things. Test their settings and filtering. Quick, intuitive and simple. A complete advert for happiness, isn't it? However, there will be changes in ranking. So let's go to ranking tab. First, we will disable all filtering conditions and the second change we will select delete fail strategies from data bank in practice this means that if any strategies fail a given test it will delete them straight away just like uh, when we deleted strategies manually next in the progress step at the very bottom i need to set where we will store the results for this, we need to create a new data bank. I click on new data bank and let's name it additional markets, for example. Confirm with create. Now the source data bank is results, but the target data bank is the newly created additional markets. Now, if we would run the process, strategic one would build 1000 strategies and test them against all the tests we've just specified. But we still need to add the Monte Carlo parameters test. This means we will add one more task. I click Add New Task button, select Copy Config from Build Strategies, select Retest Strategies, and then create another new database called Monte Carlo Parameters Final because this is the last test, actually. In the full settings of this task, in the first step, what to retest? I select strategies from data bank additional markets and store results in data bank MC parameters final. In the data tab, I set the full data range with the reset dates button and turn on one minute precision. In the cross check tab, I turn off higher backtest precision and turn on Monte Carlo retest methods. In the settings for this test, I select only the last option, randomized strategy parameters, where I set 200 simulations and 30 person for both probability and max change. In the filtering tab, I will delete the default conditions and add, like before, return drawdown ratio. And we want this return drawdown ratio from backtest Monte Carlo retest methods at a confidence level 95% to be greater than or equal to return drawdown ratio from main data and apply percentage ratio 
Save the settings. In the Ranking tab, I will again enable Delete Fail Strategies from Data Bank option and disable all custom filters. We are not interested in those at this point since we evaluated them in the first task, Build Strategies. I'll move on to the Data tab because there's one important thing to mention and that's at the bottom of this tab, there is a section called Data Range Parts. And in this section, you can set the out of sample test. We do not work with this because in our experience, it is much more efficient to work directly in the task retest strategies. But now back to work. We have created the required tasks. In the first one, we will build 1000 strategies for JBP, JPY market. In the second task, we will perform a total of five robustness tests, twice out of sample, a five per slippage test and two other tests for additional markets. And in the third one, we will perform Monte Carlo retest method test. And the strategies that pass the third and final task are our final strategies. But to keep the whole process that we see here running in an endless loop, actually, we have to add the last two additional tasks. The first, clear data banks, and the second, go to task. Clear data banks means that once all the previous tasks are done, the contents of the results data bank are cleared and we also add the additional markets data bank. The only data bank that will remain in the final will be MC parameters final, where the result strategies will be. I will now set the last add a task to go to task and select go to build strategies. This very simply means that after the first 1000 generated strategies pass all the tests so that only the best strategies remain, the whole process will start over and strategy quant will start building 1000 new strategies and so on and so on in endless loop. Strategic One does everything itself, so you can go on vacation for a few days, leave your computer on, and when you come back, there will be, let's say, 100 or 200 strategies waiting for you to, to uh, choose the best ones to put into a demo account, for example. And of course, we can't forget to run the whole process, so in the progress tab, click on Start. Note that this particular one can put a significant load on your computer. So you need to give it time. So again, unless you have a very, very powerful computer, we recommend running it overnight for the first time. And in short, this is a tool that makes the whole process of creating, building and testing strategies incredibly simple and saves us a ton of time because once we have a workflow, we just hit the start button. Plus, if you decide to continue with us after this course and you decide to get your own strategic one license with the advanced course, you will not only get this one JBP, JPY template and workflow from us, but you will get a lot of templates and workflows for different types of strategies within that advanced course for different markets that complement each other. Just ensure really complete know-how so that you can just push the button and build at the beginning. And by time you get into it, you will have learned everything and you'll start creating your exclusive workflows, templates and portfolios. Anyway, at this point, we will let Strategic One generate and build the strategies. I will move into the presentation, into the slideshow, and answer the FAQs we are getting very often. And if you are interested in anything else, feel absolutely free to add a question to the chat.
Now the first question. How challenging is this style of trading? Well, it's as challenging as you make it. Because as we mentioned, you get a lot of templates from us for billing strategies, or workflows and so on. So basically you can just copy our templates to build your strategies and portfolios based on. So um, you will just use our know-how to do that. If you start to learn how to build your templates and test your ideas, you will naturally start to become a better and more experienced trader. So easily, it's not so challenging if you just build strategies according to a template. But the difficulty will increase depending on how much you want to go into the depth of the whole issue. Next question. Strategic one does not generate any strategies. Is that normal? No, it's definitely not. Strategic one is supposed to generate strategies. So if it doesn't generate them, don't build them, email us. In general, we are here for you. So if anything is unclear and you need help with anything, feel free to contact us. If there's a problem, it's ideal to attach a screenshot to your email or a setting saved directly in Strategic Wand, but our support guys would would help you with that, what they will need. But in short, Strategic Wand has to generate stuff. If you look at the progress of your build today, you can see for yourself that everything is working and strategies are being built. Of course, How many strategies are generated always depends on the performance of the computer, but even on an average laptop, you should have the first few strategies already, maybe two or three, but you should have something. Now another question. How do you deploy the strategies on the real market? Do you need any paid software for that? No. Deploying strategies to the real market is very easy and fast which you will see for yourself in the upcoming lessons, because uh, in the next lesson, you will create a demo account. And in the lesson after that, you will deploy your strategies to this demo account. And it's free. MetaTrader 4 is available for free from almost all brokers, I guess from every possible broker. And which one you choose is up to you. I mean, which broker? We use River Markets, but all the matters is that your broker has the MetaTrader 4 platform available. Now another question. Is it advisable to deploy strategies according to this particular course or rather according to a more advanced course? What we are giving you here is a proven working workflow. You can, of course, deploy these strategies. However, to cover all situations F and to have more stable results, it is a good idea to have strategies built based on different workflows because there are workflows for uh, breakout strategies where we expect a breakout of a value and when the breakout happens, the growth will continue and we will make money. But some strategies work in a completely different way. For example, seasonal strategies are very unique and use regularly recurring cycles at different times. For example, I don't know, every Monday there is a specific market situation, so we take advantage of that. And these are situations that are very, or can be a very, very profitable in the long horizon. Or there are what are called mere reversal strategies that expect that something will extremely crash, so it will start to coming back. And it is in that more advanced course that you learn how to build strategies using other methods and you will have a portfolio for every situation. It will be a portfolio that will simply make you making money under all possible situations and market conditions, let's say. So yes, you can deploy these strategies that we are giving you in this course. But the more advanced course, along with a strategic one license, the better, because it is built so that you can build kind of bulletproof portfolio to have more stable results and uh, the portfolio to be kind of more resilient. Now, next question. 
Can I test my own idea in strategy quant? Yes. If you look into strategy quant, there is an Alka wizard tab on the left side of the main menu. And you can test your idea here and much, much more. And I've got here a final question. Can I sell strategies? This is a common question. You can. We will even do a lesson or webinar on how to sell strategies because it's something that works when it is done right. Please remember that. My colleague Thomas built his capital this way early on. So we even have a whole course on this topic, which is a part of a big educational package. Now I'm going to switch over the strategy one to take a look at the results of the JBP JPY strategies so far. The build has only been running for a little while. So basically we have no results here and I'm not going to lie. That's exactly why this webinar is recorded the day before and you are watching the record right now. Because if we were to wait for the results, we would now be here for about an hour just staring at the monitors and that probably wouldn't be very entertaining for you. So I'm going to use my magic, take us forward in time for a few minutes, and we are going to look at the results. As you can see, at this point, this whole process is running uh, one hour and 22 minutes. As you can see in the data bank MC param final are already six final strategies. And you also see that all these tasks we have in this list ran the first loop, that's the number in the bracket. And the first three tasks uh, ran the second time. The third task is running the second loop right now. Because we already have here some strategies, even uh, only six strategies, we can go through their results. And for now, I can stop or pause the generation. I'll open, for example, this first strategy and I will check Monte Carlo test. As you can see, it's not that bad. It could be better, but it's not the worst. And if I check a quiddy chart, it also looks quite good. So possibly if you would want to, you could take this strategy and deploy it on your test account. But it's only up to you. You can stick just NASDAQ to what we've done in a previous lesson of Strategy Lab, or you can also try this. Uh, there is one thing I would like to remind you. It's uh, the fact that strategies built for stock indexes are in the long term much more stable than for Forex. So if you are creating your portfolio, we would recommend that strategies built for stock indexes should be like a core of your portfolio. And then you can add several strategies for Forex, but you will see what will fit you the best. And that's actually all for this webinar. Thank you very much for making your time for, for us because it was quite a long time together. Uh, there was quite a lot of information. So I hope that everything was clear. But remember, we are here for you. So if there is anything you don't understand, you want to ask, please feel free to contact us anytime. Now I will leave the video here running for a little bit longer so you can possibly add your questions. Have a great day and see you in the next lesson.